I'm Mike Holman, the Vice President of Research with uh, Lux Research, and I'm very pleased to be here at IBM's historic T.J. Watson Research Center with uh, Dario Gill, who's the Vice President for Science and Technology at IBM, and uh, has agreed to sit down with us today and, and talk about wearables. So, Great. thank you very much. It's Excited my to pleasure to be here. Um, so, first of all, before we dive in. Uh, VP of Science and Technology, talk a little bit about your role and the, uh, the, the organization that you manage. Yeah, so I am uh, responsible for all the physical sciences research across IBM worldwide. So a lot of the basic science that we do in both physics and chemistry and material science, and then the application of those fields, broadly speaking, to push the frontiers of information technology. So that would mean also things like quantum computing and neuromorphic computing, and also applications to how do we integrate those advances in things like packaging and technology and semiconductor technology, uh, broadly speaking. Yeah. yeah, and so as I said, we're here to talk about uh, wearable technologies. So, you know, people think about wearables, they think about Apple and Samsung and the watches and Fitbits. Uh, IBM, not nececessarily the first company that, that comes to mind, but uh, and tell us a little bit about how IBM got to be involved in the wearable space and what, what you see as, as your, your play and your opportunity there. Yeah, I, I would categorize our involvement at you know, two fundamental levels. At the highest level from a business dimension, we are interested in the business of data and be able to extract information and value from data so that professionals and organizations ultimately can achieve better outcomes. So for example, uh, in the field of Internet of Things, in the IoT world, um, we are interested in how cloud technology and our analytics offerings can be the basis of allowing all the plethora of wearable devices and offerings that uh, many companies are putting out to be able to integrate securely and communicate effectively and be able to then provide value-added services on top. So that's one large dimension. Within the context of that large dimension in a particular field, we're very interested in the field of healthcare and the implications mm. that wearables and IoT are going to have in how uh, disease is managed and tracked and treated uh, over time. So that's at the highest level. But then also, and that's more you know, specific to my role and what we do here in IBM Research, is we're also interested in enabling technologies that could make our partners you know, and, and uh, technology providers uh, leverage these advances that we're making both in materials, in packaging technologies, in miniaturization, uh, in communication technologies. So really is the opportunity to take the enormous expertise that we have developed over so many decades in semiconductor technology and in nanotechnology and in packaging and mm -hmm. be able to apply it in partnership with companies that are interested in bringing products to market to create something that neither party could do on their own. So in a way, we're an enabler right, yeah. for them through core technology. And so your sort of business model is, and go to market in, in this area, is working with those partners, whether it's licensing technology, doing joint research, things like that. That's right. That's right. I mean, in the end, fundamentally, IBM is an enterprise company. So our consumers, right, from an IBM perspective, are other enterprises. So we, we, we want to work and we work with uh, companies who are bringing wearable products to market, but they're relying on our expertise from a research perspective to be able to do something that they couldn't do. And then also, once it's out there, they integrate into a broader ecosystem, mm -hmm. right, in terms of our you know, um, IBM um, you know, uh, IoT cloud foundations, right, for example, that we have that is connected to our Bluemix platform yeah. to be able to develop applications on top connected it, for example, to our cognitive capabilities for things that might require things like natural language processing or image recognition. So it's sort of at those two dimensions that it comes into play. And in terms of how, how you chose wearables as a, as a focus for some of the research and, and efforts, does, it, does that come largely out of the fact that you, you see wearables as being one of the main ways that so much of this you know, big data gets generated? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's sort of, uh, there's definitely that dimension, right? Yeah. You're, we're seeing an explosion of, you know, where data is going to be coming from and the implications that that can have. If you go back to the field of healthcare, 
right, the possibilities for doing more at-home care. And if you look at how, again, diseases will be treated over time, and we've done some studies about how ma what is the average amount of information that, for example, uh, mm. uh, a person will generate over a lifetime, right? And it might be in the order of 1.1 terabit terabytes, sorry. Right. If you look at that, and that's information that might be relevant, right, to treatment, the mm -hmm. vast majority of that will happen outside of the context of a hospital, right, right. or a clinician. And wearables are gonna play a major role right, in that space. So we're interested on not only that there's a lot of it, but what is the type of data that because there's continuous monitoring or it might be, you know, you're wearing it through, you know, time and space, what are the possibilities that that enables? So we're fascinated by that opportunity as well. And then also because as technologies, we also appreciate the fact that when something is possible, it tends to happen. And, <laughs> and so, you know, the very fact that we're miniaturizing and we see how much compute can be put in 100 microns square, say, yeah, yeah. right? And you know, the types of sensors that we can create and how they can combine with machine learning to be able to do you know, things we couldn't do before. And communication technologies and you know, what we can enable with that. It's sort of like the realization of what is possible and how much can it be integrated, it you know, convinces us that it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so to sort of that point, I mean, wearables is an area, there's a lot of excitement, there's a lot of hype, people yes. are talking up about the Apple Watch and, and all of that, but it's, it's still a market that's, uh, especially compared to where you know, we think it's going to go, is pretty, pretty nascent today. So you know, what do you see as the, mm -hmm. some of the key enablers, and from the perspective of the physical sciences mm -hmm. perspective, what you're working on, some of the key enablers that are going to, um, you know, that you're working on or that'll need to be developed to help really bring the technology mainstream? Yeah, um, I'll give you a specific example of, of a technology that we have developed here at IBM Research, uh, you know, in the area of bond de bond mm -hmm. uh, So this is an interesting issue, right? So if you're gonna create flexible electronics or, you know, any kind of technology that has to be very lightweight, very thin, you know, and, you know, incorporate into very flexible packaging. So you wanna be able to bring this to market at very low cost. So let's say we want to use conventional, you know, more traditional silicon technology base. Okay, but now you have a wafer, right, that say is a millimeter thick. Yeah. Okay, what would it take to be able to then significantly be able to thin down these wafers, be able to accommodate new materials and processes that are biocompatible, mm -hmm. and then at the time of dicing them, instead of a conventional chip, Maybe you want to dice them to very, very small size because you're going to integrate them into you know, a variety of wearable devices. So we've innovated at the level of tool and material to be able to do this right, to a level that was unprecedented. Right? So now, instead of a millimeter thick, can you do one micron thick right, technology, but use conventional processes combined with this bond bond technology. So I bring that up as an example of sort of enabling technology that can really change the game. Mm -hmm. But if I look at, that's from the element of processing, but from a capability perspective, I think battery technology, right, mm -hmm. is going to be absolutely essential. No matter what wearable device we're going to create, we're going to have to power them. And, you know, having very, very small batteries, right, with long lifetime that can sit on shelves for significant periods of time, if you're doing a consumable wearable, as an example, it's a really tricky problem. Uh, but very important and a huge differentiator. So, so a couple of examples where I think is like sort of core enabling technologies. And then you see the role you see for IBM, you, you know, developing the, the, that flexible electronics or the battery technologies and being able to, to partner with and license that technology through to, to, to device makers who can ultimately, you know, sell those, those chips or those batteries That's right. to the Apples and That's Samsungs right. or whoever the... That's right, so the deep, deep partnerships where we would do joint research agreements to develop those technologies and enable them to be successful when they bring those products to market. So just looking at the sort of the future of wearables, what do you think are the, the, are the biggest and, and, and most exciting opportunities or the things that, that excite you the most about, about the future? So for me, I mean, personally, one of the things that I see the biggest impact is, uh, is the implication that it's going to have in healthcare, right? As we have, you know, both aging populations and even in context where we don't have aging population, but, you know, uh, more and more population who's starting to get access to healthcare, the mm -hmm. amount of information and, and uh, 
kind of like treatment that would happen in the context of, say, a hospital or a point of care versus the amount that is going to have to happen also at one's home, mm -hmm. right, or on the go to be able to have the outcomes that we want is going to shift quite dramatically. Before, we didn't do that, the at-home healthcare, right, yeah. or management, because there wasn't, we couldn't do it. Right? We just didn't have the right you know, information or communication both ways between the physicians or the care practitioner and the patient. But that is what is changing. So in some ways, these hospitals of the future are going to have this blend between the in-resident patient and an increasing number who will be at home. But they will also be treated as patients as part of the overall care. If we can manage that transformation, I think the impact that we can have in society and in the world and to the well-being of many people is just extraordinary. So I personally, there's tremendous excitement on wearables for the consumer space, but I'm very interested in what are the implications of wearables for the professional world, Yeah. right? And uh, I, I think that that's just very, very exciting. Yeah, and that's something that uh yeah, we certainly see a lot also in, in industrial settings from, you know, oil and gas to hospitals to, uh, you know, manufacturing and retail. There's For safety of, applications and so on. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a very, very interesting space to be in. And, um, yeah, I, I appreciate you taking the time to tell us a little bit about, uh, about, your, uh, about your work. And um, yeah, we'll look forward to... Uh, hearing uh, more about where, where things go with, uh, with IBM and, and wearables in the future. No, thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity and thank you for coming to visit us at the T.J. Watson Research Center. It's great to be here. Yeah. Oh, always exciting to come up. Thank you very <laughs> thank much. You.